Hello ladies, good evening. How's everyone doing? I am um, <sighs> feeling like really emotional. I've just, um, I just wanted to hop on and share with you basically that <sighs> the last couple of days I've watched two things that have like really, really touched me deeply. And I wanna share with you a little bit about those things. <sighs> Say hi when you come on if you feel like saying hi. So a couple of days ago, I went to the cinema and I went to go and see a film that I've been wanting to see ever since I heard about it. And some of you might have read the post that I wrote about it on Saturday. The film is called, Hi Sam, Good Luck Leo Grande. And it's starring Emma Thompson. And um, and she plays this woman who's basically in her mid-60s, who has been in a very long and boring marriage for like 30 odd years. And she finds herself widowed and, you know, a bit lost. And she sets about on this kind of mission to like explore her sensuality. And it's something that she's never done before. And the whole premise of the film is that she's never had an orgasm. And so she hires the services of this young guy, Leo. And they meet in a hotel room every week or so for a period of four or five encounters. And she explores with this young guy like her sensuality and it's such a thrilling film and I think the reason why I found it so thrilling was because it's such a like under discussed topic right like older women aging women exploring their sensuality like that's something that we see young people in movies exploring right but we don't see women in their mid 60s on camera exploring their sensuality, playing a character who has never done that in her entire life, you know? And there was something that just touched me so deeply about, hi darling, hi, thank you for joining me. I wasn't really expecting anyone to join me, so thank you. Um, I don't know why I just feel like really emotional so it's kind of hard for me to get my words out clearly but there was something so moving about a woman of her age having the courage to connect with her desires and having the courage to arrange to meet this young guy scared shitless scared shitless about opening the door to him for the first time you know like having to hit up the mini bar like and just slurp from like the neat vodka from the fridge to have the courage to like open the door and this young guy who was so attractive oh lindy you've got to you've got to this young guy that was so freaking attractive physically, but more powerfully than that, you know, he was just so kind to her and so loving to her and so patient with her. And a couple of times when she nearly bottled it, she gave him the opportunity to leave, right? She was like, it's okay, I'm gonna pay you in full, whatever, like I've just wasted your time, you can go now. And she kind of tried to dismiss him a few times and he didn't wanna go. That was the thing, he didn't want to leave. He wanted to give her the experience that she desired to have, which was for the first time in her life to allow herself to even entertain the possibility of exploring pleasure. 
and it was almost difficult for her to even use the words you know she was like this really prudish character um that had this very kind of like austere exterior and then underneath that there was just this like vulnerable human that was brave enough to say this is the list of things that I have never explored and I would like you to help me to experience those things. <sighs> you know how much courage it takes for a woman of that age to like do that? It's just phenomenal. To dare to want more from life and to dare to want more experience, pleasure, connection, and to dare to ask for it. And to dare, like, even just to expose her body in front of this buff, you know, perfection personified young guy. And there was this one bit where she asked him, you know, like, how do you do this? Like, how do you manage to be intimate with all these different people if you don't feel an attraction to them? Like, how does that even work? And the young guy says, you know, there's always something attractive. If you have the eyes to see it, you know, you're going to find something attractive in everyone. And I focus on that. And she looked at him and she said, is there something attractive that you can find even in me? And then there's just this really beautiful sensual scene where he kind of like runs his finger across her collarbone and he's like, I love the line here of your collarbone and I love your, your neck and the way, you know, the way it slopes. And he just starts like this inventory of her body, like, finding the things his point of turn on right like where he can find that point of turn on and it's such a beautiful combination of comedy and poignancy and courage and it just it really made me reflect on this whole conditioning that we have that like you have to have done certain things by a certain age right like by this point in life I have to be experienced in this area or if I haven't succeeded in this thing by this age then I've failed and I feel like there's so much pressure specifically on women that we have this kind of so-called shelf life, you know, and we're constantly working against the clock, whether it's the biological clock or, you know, the weight of the expectation around the things that we're supposed to have done by a certain age. And to see a character on the big screen who is Emma Thompson, such a familiar face, right? But like, even for her as an actress, that was like a completely different role from anything that she's ever done before. Like that was just pure courage to film a film like that. And right at the end of the film, there's a scene where she, she drops her kimono and she just looks at herself in the mirror completely naked. And there is no flattering lighting in that scene. There is no, you know, let's just blur this out or like drape something over the strategic parts. Like she's completely naked in very plain lighting. All the creases and the breasts that she's referred to earlier in the film when she complains that, you know, they're sagging and then they don't look like how they used to look. There's this moment right at the end where she just looks herself like right in the eye in the mirror and she's just got this like naughty mischievous expression on her face like she's well chuffed with herself because she's finally allowed herself to let go and have fun and experience pleasure and 
employ the male that she desires to have that experience with you know like she says in the film at some point i don't want to have sex with like men of my age they're old so i don't like the way they look i want a firm young body and she says and i know that at my age i need to pay for that and uh so be it <laughs> you know and something so empowering about that like i know what i want i know what my aesthetic is like i know what i desire and it's you and i'm gonna fucking pay you and you're gonna show me a good time you know <sighs> so that was the first thing that inspired me and then yeah stephanie you've got to see it it's just iconic and then I've just watched the second half of the J-Lo film. I don't know if any of you guys have seen the halftime uh, film, the Netflix special that, you know, basically documentary, fly on the wall type documentary following J-Lo. I think it's in 2019. And again, like the thing that the J-Lo film and the uh, Leo Grande film have in common is the protagonist, the woman, is a woman of a certain age, right? The film follows J-Lo the year that she turns 50. And what's phenomenal about that film is that she's in her fucking prime, you know? Like, the things that come together for her in that year are things that she says 25, 30 years ago. I wasn't ready for this. I wouldn't have been ready for this. So at the time when she was 25 years old or 30 years old, when arguably you could say that she was in her physical prime as far as her beauty, she wasn't, she wasn't ready for the powerhouse performances that she was ultimately going to give at the age of 50, right? So she had the lead role in this film called Hustlers, which I haven't seen, but she basically plays, I think she's like a, a pole dancing type character, but it's like an iconic film that like after, I think she, the film, the documentary said that she'd had something ridiculous, like 31 nominations for Best Supporting Actress over the previous 20 years. 31 nominations and I don't think she'd won anything. I don't think she'd won any awards to that point for her acting. But 31 fucking nominations. And she just kept going and kept going and kept going. And what the film kind of really, like, helps you to see is, like, how much she's had to strive against, you know? Like, the media has not been kind, really, to her. They've either kind of, like made her into a caricature of what a Latina woman is, i.e. sexy, big hips, dancer, you know, somebody to kind of like a pin-up, basically, a Latina pin-up. So she's either been kind of typecast as the Latina big-assed pin-up, or she's been quite like ridiculed and diminished for her acting ability. But she's not had a huge amount of support in the media for like, or, or recognition for her work. But the film shows, like, her character, her strength of character, you know, that she's just kept going and kept going and taking the next film role and taking the next film role and just deepening her craft, you know? And Melanie, for those of you that are in the Alpha Femme world, you will know that Melanie recently referenced this J-Lo film in her program, in her cash program, which is kind of what made me want to watch the film. And, you know, it's it's clear in the film that she's had to strive and strive and strive to keep showing up despite the criticism, despite the lack of recognition, despite, you know, the grueling schedule that that woman has, like, had. I mean, I, I had no idea, really, but, like... There's one bit where she literally had the, I think it was the premiere for the film that she was finally being recognised for one weekend. And then the Super Bowl, Super Bowl performance, which was the following weekend, which was like the performance of her life. 
and there's like so much pressure on her shoulders like every single thing sort of converges and condenses into this this finale career defining performance at the super bowl and there's one bit where she says you have to find your deepest why for like why you're doing this and that's something that melanie says all the time because if JLo allowed herself to like listen to all the criticism over the years or all the ridiculing or all the belittling like there's no way that she could have just kept finding the, the strength internally to keep showing up for the next role and the next launch and the next opportunity, right? And in that scene, she said, like, for her, the deeper why that for her as to why she does this year in, year out, despite never being recognized, particularly for her talent and her hard work and her commitment and her longevity and everything else is her profound desire to make a difference in other people's lives, to be the example of that Latina woman that opened doors for like the, the next generation to come, her desire to connect from the heart with others, her desire to like release and write music that like maybe someone's gonna hear those lyrics and maybe that's gonna be that one song that gets them through like some really hard time in their life. And it became so clear to me that like her profound commitment to her deeper why, her deeper why for why she keeps showing up like this, that's the thing that's carried her over the years. That's the thing that creates the icon. That's the thing that creates the legend. It takes so much personal power to keep believing in your mission, keep believing in yourself even when you know that nobody externally is recognizing you as the best singer or the best actress or the best anything, you know? And that's what has made her this fucking extraordinary legend. And right at the end of the film, it was talking about how like she started this whole um, project now that's got a huge amount of funding now. It's running into the billions to pump money into the Latina communities for, you know, women, Latina women, entrepreneurs and things like that. And it's just like watching her take the power and the platform she's got to the next level and the next level and the next level to keep reaching people in new ways that she can inspire. And as she was preparing for the Super Bowl performance, I'm looking at her like while she's everyone else around us in a complete flap because there's this whole last minute controversy about whether she's going to be allowed to use cages, right? Because part of her concept for the show, which timed in with all the controversy around, you know, the Mexican border issues when Trump was in power and like all of the Mexican people, including children being placed in cages and things while they were trying to cross the borders. So she wanted to make a political statement with the performance and she wanted to have these little girls, these Latina girls in cages on the stage, emerging from the cages, singing, let's get loud. Remember that iconic JLo track that I'd completely forgotten even existed. But there was a scene where she was prepping these little girls and she was like, you are representing every Latina child, you know? And when you sing that line, let's get loud, like you basically like, it's like a call to action. It's like, you know, we exist. We live on American soil. We are like equal citizens, you know? And there was this whole last minute controversy about the cages and some of the like top executives that, you know, sign off these performances were basically saying we can't have that. It's too controversial. And all of her team are like going into kind of panic stations around potentially having the whole concept for the show pulled last minute and having to completely rejig it. And she just goes into this like complete what she described as like Zen mode, completely calm. And she just says to her like creative director guy, I don't care what happens. We're doing the performance the way that I have conceptualized the performance. 
We have less than 24 hours to go and nothing is changing. <sighs> she just tapped into this next level power of like, this is the vision. This is how I'm doing it. I am not just getting on stage to shake my ass. Like, yes, I'm going to shake my ass. And yes, I'm going to shake my ass like I've never shaken my ass before. And I've got a political message. And I'm a visionary. And this is how I see my performance. And nobody, nobody is going to tell me that my vision is not going to be honoured and respected. It's just like next level power. Next level power. And while I was watching her behind the scenes, getting ready to come out on that stage, having not slept at all the previous night, I'm looking at her and I'm thinking, how the fuck do people find that extra gear? Like, how do they find that inexplicable power to like, when they're already completely exhausted, to pull out this like performance of a lifetime? And I realized what gave her that power was like the reciprocal nature of the giving and the receiving, right? Like she was giving her absolute all to that performance, to her dancers, to the children, to all the people that were involved in that show. She was giving the audience, she was giving every single one of them every last drop of what she had to give. And every single time she walked into the room, but like backstage with the dancers and stuff, they would all just start like chanting, J-Lo, J-Lo, J-Lo. And I could feel the energy that they were giving back to her. And I could feel her allowing herself to receive that energy back. And I was like, wow, that's how, how super famous people do this. They give so much light and energy out but they also know how to like harness it back and let it in. And when she came off the stage, she was like, do you know, she said like, every single rehearsal for this show has been fucking hard, like exhausting and so hard and so many technical issues and so many setbacks and so many like, so much red tape to get through, to get the concept through and to try and produce this incredible show in like seven minutes. So she'd had so many challenges along the way. But when she came off the stage, she was like, I literally felt light as a feather. Light as a feather. She said, something took over me. And I was like, that's, that's great spirit. That's great spirit. Like she gave every single thing that she had to give. And then just at that last minute where she needed to go out and find that extra gear and give this performance of a lifetime, aged 50, dancing like a 20 year old, great spirit came in and just went <laughs> and just elevated her to like a whole other level. So if you haven't seen Good Luck Leo Grande and you haven't seen Half Time with J-Lo, get on it, ladies, because both of those films will give you, well, they certainly gave me anyway, this incredible feeling that this age thing, we've just got to take it off the table. Because... In the Leo Grande film, you see like a 65 year old woman have her first orgasm of her entire life. And you see this scene at the end where she's just like lit up, you know, she's lit up from the inside because that sexual energy has been switched on. And you just look at that character and you think everything and anything is possible for this woman because she had the courage to go through that portal and face her deepest fears around her body and her ability to like let go and experience pleasure. And then with JLo, you know, when she said 20 years ago, I couldn't have held the energy of the Super Bowl. I couldn't have held the pressure. I couldn't have held the power. 
And I couldn't have held the responsibility of the message, the political message that I was destined to carry onto that stage. So all that just to say, never ever think that you've passed your best. Never ever think that you're too old for anything because these two iconic women in these iconic films have given me so much energy and so much life force and so much excitement. I'm considerably younger than both of them. But at times I feel like, oh, I'm too old now for X, Y, Z. Hell to the no. Hell to the no. As Melanie always says, I'll finish with this. You're the youngest that you'll ever be. Today. Tonight. You're the youngest that you'll ever be. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? <sighs> so I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you so much for those of you that are still with me. Thank you so much to those of you who tuned in. I love you. Watch these two films and just, just go and live your best life. I feel very, I feel like my Instagram name used to be Motivational Laura. <laughs> my friend Calpro always used to laugh and say, Motivational Laura's at it again. But I feel like I was destined to come on tonight and give you some motivation. And I never do lives at night because my energy is usually way perkier in the morning. But for whatever reason, I was guided to come on. So thank you. Let me know in the comments if you feel inspired to watch these films and if you feel inspired by the concept that you are the youngest you'll ever be today. So what are you going to do? I hope.